Hello everyone and welcome back. In this lesson we are going to give a practical example of observable concatenation. We are going to learn why concatenation is ideally suited for save operations. We want to make sure that our save operations happen in the same order as the values are emitted. And this implementation here does not provide that logic. We are indeed taking the value of our first observable, which is the valid form changes observable, and we are converting it here to a second save course observable. But we are not waiting for the previous save to complete. Let's then see how can we implement that. The first thing that we are going to do is we are going to take this uh, part of the code that creates a new observable and we are going to extract this here to a new method called save course. This method is going to take one argument, which are the form changes, and it's going to get us back an observable. This observable represents the HTTP call that is doing a put to the backend. We are now going to use this function here to create this second observable. This will allow us to understand better what is going on here. If we look further at the simplified logic that we have here, we can see that what we really want to do in this situation is to take the values of the source observable and for each value to create a new save observable. And then what we want to do is we want to concatenate all those derived observables together in order to make sure that the save operations are done in the right order. So what we have here is a mixture between a mapping operation where we are taking the output of one observable value changes and we are creating from it a second observable and of the concatenation logic. So this mixture of transforming one observable into another and concatenating the result together is best implemented using the RxJS concat map operator. Let's have a look here at the marble diagram to understand how this operator works. So as usual, what we have here is the source observable that is emitting here a series of values, one, three, five, etc. We then have here a mapping function. What the mapping function does is it takes an input value and then it produces an observable. This observable will emit three times the input value multiplied by 10 and then it will complete. So it's a function that transforms a value into an observable. So here is how concatmap works. We are going to listen to the values of the first observable until it completes. And for each value of the source observable, we are going to create a second derived observable. So in our case, the values of the first observable are going to be valid form values that are getting emitted over time. Our derived observable that in this case is being derived here from the value one is our save operation. Here, this derived observable is emitting here multiple values. So it takes this value and multiplies it by 10 and emits it three times. But in the case of our save operation, we are simply going to do an HTTP put call to the backend and we're going to complete the observable immediately. But the idea is the same. We took one value and we converted it into an observable. Now, as long as this observable is emitting values, those will be emitted here in the output of concat map. Only when this initial observable is completed, only in that case, we are going to be creating a second observable. So once this observable completes, we are going to take the next value of the source observable and we are going to create a second observable. So here we have it. This is the output of the second observable. We took the value three, multiplied it by 10 and emitted it three times and then we completed it. So we have here the three values 30. After the second observable completes, then we are going to take this value that we have here, the third value that was emitted by the source observable, and we are going to derive our final observable. We are going to emit here three values of 50, and then the source observable completes and the output concat map observable also completes. So as we can see, this is the operation that we are looking for. 
we want to take the form values, turn them into HTTP requests and wait for the first HTTP request to complete before creating the second HTTP request. Let's try this out to see if this works as expected. We are going to switch back here to our program and we are going to refactor this into using the concat map operator. We are going to apply here concat map and we are going to take here as the argument of the mapping function the form value changes. The output of this mapping function is going to be an observable. So we are going to call here our save course function that produces here our observable. With this, we have completed here our refactoring. We no longer need here the subscription to the second observable because this is being done here automatically via concat map. Concat map is taking the values from value changes, creating new observables, subscribing to them and concatenating them together. Let's now try this out to see if this logic is working as expected. We are going to also go ahead and remove here this uh, success handler from the call to subscribe. Let's switch to a larger window and do here a couple of modifications. We are going to modify here the title of the course, the category and we are going to modify also the date. So as you can see each save operation takes about 2 seconds in the backend. This is because our backend introduces a small delay on the save. As we can see, the second save is only going to be triggered after the first save request is completed. So this means that our save operations are happening in sequence exactly as we were trying to implement. Even in the case when we are emitting a lot of values, we are going to see that the operations still happen in sequence. Let's type here a new title and we are going to see that each time that we hit key up that is going to trigger a new save request and we can see here on the waterfall diagram that everything is happening sequentially as expected. Notice that here we have a lot of requests as we were typing. We are going to learn a new operator later in the course that is going to allow us to reduce the number of requests. It's going to be the debounce time operator. Now the question is what if our operations, instead of having to be made in sequence, we want instead to perform them in parallel as fast as possible? Let's see that this is going to introduce a new observable combination strategy called Merge.